Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm sorry I'm running really late, guys. Here we go. Happy Friday. I'm 30 minutes late. It's funny. Camera. And we'll get right into it. I'll give everyone a minute to come in. So the first thing I want to talk about, um, I want to thank everyone, um, guys, for all your support with the videos and everything. Um, so I've been going live in my Facebook group for the last couple of years. And just recently, probably in the last, I would say, 15 months, just over a year now, I've been uploading my videos to YouTube. And we've had an update with Facebook, and it's not letting me go in the... Um, letterbox or the landscape mode and I'm stuck in portrait mode when I'm live. So what I've decided to do, because I want to keep my videos free and I want to keep my costs down um, as much as I can when it comes to that. I don't do video editing. I don't do any of that fun stuff. I just come live. I show you what I'm, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm working on, the products I'm using, and I give you guys demos and show you guys different things. So I'm very close now to a thousand subscribers on YouTube and it's just amazing guys. I think I'm at 953 this morning. So I cannot thank you all enough for that. And, um, as soon as I get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube, I'm going to be able to finally do YouTube lives. And that's where I'm going to take my YouTube, like my videos going forward. So as soon as that happens, my videos going forward will be on YouTube. So I'm really excited for that. So, Right now, we're just going to have to, until I get there, we're just going to have to settle with my videos being in this format, and I'm just going to um, have to be super careful to stay in frame. So, I want to get right into it today. So, guys, thank you so much for all your love and support and all of your um, positive feedback. Um, actually, my video that I did a year ago, guys, the one for um, the alcohol inks, uh, the, the alcohol ink washi tape, it's got over 7,000 views on on um, YouTube. So I can't thank you guys enough. So I want to talk first about my Sizzix plates. So you guys all know I use a Sizzix Big Kick or a Big Shot. It's the same machine. It just depends on where you buy it. I got mine at Michael's, so it's the Big Kick. Now I use this one here called the Precision Base Plate for Intricate Thinlets. This is the one that they came out with before the chrome plate. So this is the one I use, and see, you, you normally use it this side and cut your dies into it, but I find that it actually dulls your dies. So I do not do that. I use it like this, and I put all my dies on here facing up. So this is how I use Sticky Grid. I cannot recommend this enough. Sizzix Sticky Grid comes in a pack of five sheets, but what I do is I take my sheets and I rip them in half. So when I rip them in half... This is the full length, if you guys can see. Whoop, that came up. Sorry, guys. They're double-sided. They stick. And then you have the protective sheet that just goes back over top when you're not using it. I just kicked it off. Sorry, guys. And then this here is where I've torn it in half. So essentially, you're going to get double that. So this is like having 10 sheets of sticky grid for your plate because I tear mine in half. So essentially what I do is I just position my dies on here the way I want them. And then I run them through with one of my cutting plates. So by using this precision base, not only am I getting a flat surface to put and a better surface because it's thicker to put my, um, my Sizzix Thinlets dies on, but it's also giving me less wear and tear on my cutting plate. So I'm not using two, I'm only using one when I make my sandwich and I put it through. And I hear a lot of people that want to replace their um, die cutting machines because they've warped their plates, when all you have to do is replace your cutting plates. So as you can see with this one, mine's pretty much done. It's not even, if you guys can see that, I'm still getting a great cut out of my dies, but it's not sitting flat. So essentially does one of these when it, when it runs it through, which is fine. But then when I buy a pack of, because they come in a two pack when you buy your plates, I get double the amount of time off of each plate. 
So now that this plate's done, I'm going to discard it, and I'm going to replace it with the with the second plate that came in this set, and I'm going to order another set. And then I know that when that one's done, I have an extra, then I have a set. And that's how I do it. So once this one's done, I order the next one when I go on to the second plate. So it just makes them last that much longer. So I just wanted to share that. And then this prevents your dies from overlapping mm -hmm. and from crunching. Because if you overlap your thin lit dies and run them through your your big shot, they're going to um, they're going to um, run through and crunch into each other, and then you're not going to get um, a proper die cut anymore if if that happens. So this prevents that from happening from your dies overlapping. So I just wanted to quickly share that. So that's essentially how I use my cutting plate. So that's my little hack I wanted to share. So again, I'm just going to open this. Because I just opened this one. This is a new pack. And then I have this one here for my next one. There we go. Perfect. So now I wanted to touch a little bit on the dies that I'm using. So the first one that I'm using is this one over here. This is my Sizzix Specimen from Tim Holtz. It's 54 dies. So I've gone ahead and over here I've cut this one all out. A couple of times so I have some of the labels I have the words on another piece of, over here beside me and I have the um, I have the um, specimen slides and I have the little file folder so those are uh, pre-cut beside me over here um, this one here is specimen six six five nine three zero Tim Holt specimen and then I have the new ones in front of me here and they are the Vault Picture Show. So that one here, I've die cut here. So I have all these little components here to play with this one. And I've only done this one so far. And then this one here is uh, Vault Watch Gears 666603. And um, there's 29 dies in this one. And there's 15 in Picture Show. So that's the two Vault dies I've done here. So for next time, I'm going to have the other ones die cut. I just didn't get a lot of time. And that's these two here, the um, Vault World Traveler and Vault Boutique. And I have this one here as well. It's a newer die called Gentleman. So those ones I want to cut for our next video. So I'm just going to put those aside. Okay. So I want to get right into this. And I have my glue in front of me. And um, we'll start here. So I just want to make sure that I'm completely in frame. And I'm going to be using Paper Artsy Rusting Powders, powder here. And I'm going to be using um, Paper Artsy Infusions. So I'm super excited for that. So let's give this a go. So as you can see, I've cut two of everything so I can layer everything up. Because these could possibly be pieces, again, for one of my covers. For our journal series that we're working on and then I'm gonna give myself some homework too guys I want to get some more of my other dyes I have filament and I have um, the propeller dyes and I have some other ones too that are steampunk that I'm going to go ahead and prepare for our next video and I'll have those ready for next week. Here we go. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I am Fifi the Paper Crafter across social media. And as soon as I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to be doing YouTube lives. So I will no longer be doing lives on Facebook, except for Happy Mail, just to keep that um, confidential in our group. So that's the only time. Or if we're doing something for a swap and I need to do a video. 
then I'll do something like that. But maybe a demo once in a while or something. But I'll have my um um my regular lives are going to go to to YouTube. And it's just because of the um like I can't go live in the letterbox um or landscape mode. So that's just gonna be it's gonna be easier. So now we have our base. And we have our inner circle here. Sorry guys, I'm on that last quarter inch of the bottle, so it is stubborn. And doesn't want to play nice. There, that's a little better. Okay. And I can line these up. Perfect. So now that we have these together, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to use our rusting powder. So I'm going to, on this base, we're going to use just walnut, which is one of the new colors of infusions. So let's give this a go and see what that's like. So again, I want to make sure I know my difference. I have water in front of me and I also have vinegar, just regular white vinegar. And I'm using water for this method. And I'm just going to give that a little spritz and I'm going to move my water around evenly. There we go. And we're going to watch the magic happen. Okay, let's make sure I'm in frame. Here we go. Let's put our little crystals on here of walnut. There we go. And we'll watch the magic happen. And I like that where I'm leaving it to be a little bit gritty. There we go. And I can always come in with a watercolor brush just to push these around. I want a nice, nice dark saturation. I really love that. That is beautiful. So I'm just loving these infusions. And see how very little I used, guys? Very, very little. And it goes such a long way. I'm going to grab my heat tool. There we go. Um, no, I'm not plugged in all the way. Sorry, guys, one sec. There we go. I'm really loving that it's nice and dark. And this is the Infusions Walnut. There we go. So I'm now going to put that aside and let it dry fully. I'll bring it close. That is nice. Okay. There we go. Now while I have this little bit here, I'm not going to waste that. I'm going to go right in and we're going to um, do the gears up as well. So let's just get that done. There we go. Just getting out the little bits. I am loving that. That is amazing color. the sides of all of that. There we go. So I'll put that one aside. Then we'll do a couple of these. So we're going to do a couple of different things. I want to do some dark in the walnut. So 
So this is a little darker than like a vintage photo, but it's not as dark as ground espresso. So it's like perfect. So I'm really loving this color. It's a whole new color. It's amazing. I love Paper Artsy products, and I'm really addicted to their paints, too, now. I really love them. They have the same, like, consistency of gesso. So now you don't have to gesso your work first. You can just go right in with your Paper Artsy paints and pull some gel prints or um, add some color to your work and then go right in with your stamping and everything. You don't have to worry about priming your surface first. So it's, it saves that extra step. And then you don't have to worry about um, covering up all that white area. Or if you want to do something more vintage, then you don't have to even add the white. So that's what I like about it, too. And their colors are just amazing. I have um, all of Seth Aptor's colors, and I have a lot of um, Tracy Scott, and then the regular Paper Artsy line. Oh, that's just being a little bit stubborn. I'm trying to weed this. I did see, because again, I'm using warped a warped plate. I didn't cut it out all the way for this one here. So that's okay. I can come with my Tim Holtz uh, mini snips, and I can just fix that. So if you guys can see, if you run into that, you just come in, give it a little snip. Cut, and you can fussy cut it. Yeah, just like that. Again, I'm going to paint this one with walnut infusions. And this is just the leftovers that I had on my desk from the other one. There we go. And then I'm just going to touch that up right along here. I see I've got a light spot that didn't get any infusions. I just want to get that right into here. Perfect. Now I want to come into Rusty Car. And I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, I do have a little. So see the other thing, you can take your infusions or your rusting powder and you can poke a hole. And then you just tap. If you guys can see that. So it's more controlled. And then I can come right in on my desk and just add, make sure I have water. Okay. And this one's called Rusty Car. I'm just going to go right in. Again, beautiful rusty color. That's rusty car. That's one of my favorite colors. That and I'm loving the walnut too. Here we go. So it's a little lighter. Maybe we'll do some of the smaller ones on this lighter one. There we go. And then I'm putting them all over there to dry. So this is my favorite method. You die cut on either uh, craft stock or or white card stock, and then I um, watercolor or ink cut my my gears and my, my die cuts. So that's one thing I love to do. And today I decided to use some infusions. Um, you can use your distress inks, your distress um, oxide sprays. 
I do that a lot of the time, and I also use Seth Afters. But I'm really loving the infusions. And you can see how very little goes a very long way. And I have this one here. I think I'm going to do that in rusting powder. Same with these ones. Yeah. After we glue those together. Okay, this one here. I'll get something in between. Where I'm mixing a little bit of walnut in with my rusty. There we go. My rusty car. Bunch of little spot that didn't want to cooperate. There we go. I love Tim Holtz mini snips. For getting into any stubborn little corners or or spots that don't want to cooperate. There we go. Gears. So this is somewhere between walnut and rusty car. And I just want to make sure I have good coverage. There we go. There we go. So we're getting there. These are very finicky because they have a lot of little pieces. There we go. So I'm just going to kind of weed them as I go. I'm really loving the gears. So I want to save some to do with the um, rusting powder as well. So we'll do that. Um, if I can still pick up some more of this walnut. So this is a good one probably to do in the walnut stain. There we go. There we go. And I'm probably going to glue these ones here together just to give it um, a little bit more substance. There we go. And 
And these are these weird little belt things. I'll show you. They're teeny tiny. Here we go. That one. Yeah, and this one. My glue sticking all over the place. There we go. Sorry guys. I had to really eyeball that because these are teeny tiny. So I have that one here. And then I have that one here. Okay. And I can get rid of all the little bits now. So I'm just going to push those off my mat so I know that they're just um, little bits for the garbage. Okay, there we go. Now I want to go into my rusting powder. Um, first, let's just clean this off. There we go, so I'm going to stick my arm in that. Okay, there we go. And this is my vinegar. And I'm coming into a little bottle the container that I have here. And I've dumped my um, in my uh, paper artsy rusting powder in there. And then I'm going to take an old paintbrush that I have here and just. And every time I do that, it reactivates. my rusting powder without me having to wait eight hours for it to activate. So now I have this beautiful watercolor that's rust. Here we go. And then I'm going to show you something really cool guys. So now I've wet this with vinegar and rusting powder. I can take my rusting powder and I've done the same thing where I've put a hole in the top. And then anywhere where I want this to be thicker and darker, I just have to pull the rust. So what does that mean? I just have to come in with more vinegar and then I pool it with the rusting powder. And I'll show you guys what I mean. So I'm just going to have the rusting effect anywhere where I touch it with the rust, but anywhere where I pull it and it has more rust, um, rusting powder on there, I'm going to get a really deep red um, effect. So I, again, I'll show you guys. We'll do this whole area like this. Um, I think this is the inner one. Hang on. Yeah, the outer area, sorry guys, and that's the inner area. So we don't have to do the whole entire thing. I just want to do like, yeah, anything that we're going to see, which is just like this area here, because we're going to layer those. Okay, so just 
like that. So we have our color going. But then I want to pull this. And add more. Along my edges. Here we go. And again, I'm making sure I'm using vinegar and not water. You can use water, just the activation time is twice what it is with something acidic like vinegar or um, lemon juice. You can use lemon juice as well. I haven't tried that method. I don't have lemon juice. I use real lemons when I, when I cook, so I don't really buy concentrated lemon juice. So it's not something I use. But was I'd give it a try. But if that's something you have, absolutely give it a go. But I just use white vinegar. And I, the whole thing doesn't have to be done like that, but I like it. So we have it now pulled in a couple of areas where I have extra resting powder. And if you don't like that method either, you can always do it like this. Or it can be a little bit more. And very slowly. There we go, where I can make it controlled like that. Just in a couple of areas. Like that. Like that. And like that. Okay. And I'm just going to spritz that. Oh, I'm leaking over here. And I don't mind, I'm going to leave that to dry. There we go. So see, it's very um, metallic when you first do it, and then as it sits to dry, um, it'll it'll rust. It'll give me that rusted effect. It just takes a long time. So I'm just gonna put that to the side. Here, actually, I'll put that over here with the other one. There we go. I'll move that over. And just, yep, let that do its thing there. And that's what I love about it too, it's not toxic, it's just activated with vinegar. So if you get vinegar on you, it's not a big deal. Not like getting something oil-based with turpentine or um, like alcohol ink. That is toxic, so you have to be careful not to breathe that in um, too much. Okay, and we're going to rust these little bits here. And I'm just going to go ahead and use what I have in here for that. I wanted more of an effect on the outer piece, where these are just going to give me like a nice rusted sort of even tone. There we go. That's why I love Tim Holtz glass media mat, because everything that I do on here, it just, I can make a big mess and then I can just wipe it down and it makes for a nice, easy cleanup. And I'm not just drawing the surface of my wood desk. So it definitely helps. There we go. And these give me a whole different color on top of the other ones. So that's kind of neat. And I don't have to worry too much about this. I wouldn't use a good paintbrush because I find it does embed and I've, it's broken some of my, my bristles off of my Jupiter brushes. So I wouldn't use like one of my good Windsor Newton brushes or my Princeton brushes or anything. Just These ones are just King Art and I got them on Amazon. And like a great big huge pack of them. I think it was 50 or 60 brushes for I think it was like $25 or something. I did that a couple years ago but I do guys I always replace my brushes. I like to do that every I don't know once a year at least and then I'll go on there and be like oh I like these ones let's try these. So I have I've replaced my Windsor Newton brushes I have three more packs of them so those are there and then I have um um I'm trying a new set from 
I think it's called Montmartre Studio. I have a bigger set from them in a case. And then I bought Sumi brushes for doing Japanese calligraphy. So I picked those up. Yeah, I'll do this last little one here. So I think that's everything I wanted to rust, except we're going to go right into picture show. We'll go right into here because I want to do one of these. Yeah, in my rusting powder. So I'm just going to, here we go, what kind of chips fall where they may. There we go. I'm just even it out. And you can come in and do several coats, too, because the more coats that you do in this, um, the darker it's going to be, the more predominant it's going to be. And the same thing, I want this to have a really rusted effect. So, whoops, that's infusions. I want to come in with a rusting powder. Sorry, guys. Show in frame here. I'm going to step around. Here we go. So, I'm just giving this a really light. I'm going to get a nice, there we go. Then I can spread this around. And then it looks organic. And I want to make sure that I'm pulling that in, yeah, in vinegar. There we go. Just keep adding more. So this is something I like to spend an afternoon doing, and then I just come back to it. So I can come back to these tonight. And that's what I'll do, guys. When I come back to these tonight, I will post a picture of them in group so you can see what they look like. And absolutely, guys, feel free to join my Facebook group. So any of the mixed media techniques and the different things that you that you try, like making your own alcohol ink from washi tape or um, any of the things that I've demoed or showed how to do, um, in videos or I'm um, using any of my digital kits absolutely guys feel free to post your work in my Facebook group or anything you're working on any mixed media is welcome with um, um, any of your makes any of your books or any of your um, um, any of your projects that you're working on feel free to post them and share them with us I've decided to do them both, and then um, I can decide which one I like better. So whichever one pulls a little better. This is just like a little pouncing technique, just to make the, um, uh, to gather the product, like to pull it. So I'm just rolling my brush. It's like a rolling technique, or pouncing, like that. I'm really loving that effect. There we go. And we still have another picture show to do. So we'll do a second one. There we go. Just basically want to get everything all um, inked around and colored up. And I'm just like showing my process start to finish. Because a lot of people ask me, Fifi, how do you do that?
and some, a lot of people too are visual learners, so they want to see how things are done, opposed to me just explaining how they're done. So we just do everything together. But um, for this series, I am going to show you um, a few different ways to sew in your signatures. So I'm going to be doing that. But then going forward, I think I'm just going to be putting my books together. And then we can work on how we're going to decorate them and doing different techniques and things. So that I don't bore you with that constantly. Um, but I do need to have a good couple of videos um, explaining how to do it for new people. Anyone coming in. So um, for anyone interested in my method of how I do it. So I'm going to do that for this series, but then going forward, I'm just going to start skipping that part out. So I have my book already together. It just saves time too. And then if anyone wants to learn, I have these videos that I can just, um, give them like a reference to. And you guys will see the difference between this and this. So I'm going to leave it like that. For that one anyway. Can the slide the infusions over here. And then I have more of a spot up here to put these so they can dry. Okay, we have this one here. And we have that one here. And we'll rust up one of these and then maybe we'll maybe rust up a couple of these. There we go. I love the rusted effect. There, and I have this real nice and activated over here too. So this is giving me like a nice yellowy, rusty, red rusty color. But the more you pull it, the redder it becomes. So it's super fun. And then I'm going to wipe this up now. So I'm going to use the vinegar to get rid of this off my desk. There we go. And absolutely keep this. This is rusty goodness. If you guys can see that. And I showed in another previous video of how to run these through your sewing machine and make tech, your own textiles out of this. So absolutely, I keep all this good stuff. This is my favorite method of rusting. I like the Prima Rust Effects paste as well. But I like them for, they're more for something metal, I think. Because I can get like, I can get that stuff to pool, like on a key or, um, something like that so I like to do that on that sort of thing and but when it comes to paper or fabric I think this is phenomenal product I don't know why we're we don't want to come out there we go I just like to make sure that I'm thoroughly rinsing my um, rusting powder out of my brush and of course I'm going to clean it with soap and water after as well but I just want to get rid of that again these brushes I only use specifically for that so and so I keep them separate here okay put my pin back in my glue There we go. Okay. I'm going to grab some more just walnut. And I'm just going to put a tiny little bit here. So you guys can see, very, very little, just a few crystals. And then my water. And my paintbrush. I'm just loving this color.
There we go. And then we have these tiny little film strip ones, and I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm, I'm going to show you guys something too. Just get rid of those. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm not worried about these. These I'm just going to put off to the side. There we go. So, I'll put these here. These, uh, um, I'll show you guys a little trick. So let's just wet them first. Completely wet them and stick them straight flat down. There we go. So those are very wet. And then we can come in with just walnut. Um, here's one I haven't done yet. Um, let's see here. That's a little big. I'm looking for one of my smaller. Here we go. Yeah, one of my smaller poke jewels. Okay, here we go. And we just just like that. And you can also use a push pin. Just don't hurt yourself. And then I go back in and I just do one of these. There we go. So you have a nice little hole there in the center. And then we turn it this way, and we just, it's a very controlled, it's very faintly coming out. There we go. And we're going to spritz that with water. so well. All right. This for the video. I'm pretty good at doing it this way too, where I just come in and I spritz. And I get good coverage. And I find that I don't knock like a whole bunch out. I just, it's very controlled and I just lightly tap it, touch it. There, and then I can pull this. And this also gives me texture, so I really love that. then I can get the crystals to stick. Which gives it a whole different effect. Here we go. And it's using it like more concentrated. Now I'm just getting that to stick and pull. So I've got it stuck to the mat. Mm -hmm. I'm just pulling it off. Mm -hmm. And I'm just adding to it. There we go. And these are going to be great. We can do all kinds of stuff with these. So today we're just kind of having a play and we're, um, we're inking up some of our die cuts so we can use them for makes in our next video. And I haven't really decided exactly what direction to take with the, with the, um, with the, with the steampunk cover. I think what I want to do though is, um, use the 
the, the one that we created in the last video towards the bottom with the um, with the gauge meter and then I want to add the um, I want to add the uh, pocket watch um, maybe like in there somewhere I haven't really decided yet, but I think that's what we're going to do. But all these other pieces we're going to use on tags, we're going to use on pages, we're going to use as tucks. I'm going to show you all kinds of different fun stuff. I have the other film strips as well. And I'm going to do some of the same techniques that I showed today just to catch those all up. So I'll do some off camera this weekend so I can get us kind of caught up. Because we were five months already at this um at, at this journal series it's taking so long that I just I haven't had a chance to come live it's just been crazy on my end my kids keep bringing us home sickness from school <laughs> and then um we've just had so much so much stuff happen and it's with our house and stuff too it's just been one thing after another so it's just been crazy so um my husband and I've been so busy and um Yeah, it's been super hectic. And as you guys know, I take most of the summer off as well from doing videos just because my house is too crazy. I've got three kids and um, they're all in elementary school and then I'll have them home for summer. And yeah, doing videos with my kids, it's like, no. <laughs> and my cat and my dog meowing and barking at them constantly. And it's funny because that's the first thing I heard when um, my husband left the house. The cat was crying at the door for him. And it's not the cat, it's the dog. It's not the dog, it's the kids. <laughs> it just, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So, yeah. There we go. I am loving this. I have a really strong concentrate here. So I think I'm just going to give that a go in here. There we go. And then just really add to it and darken it up. I'm loving this color. There we go. So we're just giving everything a nice base coat. I love the look of it all being inked up by hand like this. I find, you know, when you take the time and you add all those little details in, it just makes such a difference in the end results of your work. Some people might say, oh, well, Kiki, why wouldn't you just use brown cardstock? It just doesn't give me the same effect. I like to start with something that's white or craft and then work from there. There we go. I'm just going to drag that through here. Again, I'm loving that effect. There we go. And I'm just going to pull it. So it's nice and quiet. It's just me in here today. And I'm enjoying some time in my studio. Yeah, I've got the dog sitting behind me. He's watching me as I'm filming. Here's me talking. <laughs> there we go. Really love the effect of that. So that was a little lighter on the one side, especially too. And it just, it's going to give it some different effects. So I don't really need to do those center pieces, but I do want to give one of these, um, one of these, uh, specimen slides kind of a go or, uh, file folder cards. And I'm not worried if I pile them up a little bit, they'll dry because they're just sitting on my desk. I'm going to put a little bit more water and just spritz that. So I get something a little lighter. In order to be more like a wash. Here we go. There we go. Let me make sure I get all my edges here. 
and then we have like a yep yeah, just like that and I can pick it up and I suppose you could use the same method with the uh, infusions like you would your Tim Holtz um, stains and dyes or your um, and inks where you're putting down your um, your mat here and you get the same effects because it's all water-based products. There we go. I'm just gonna so I guess get in frame. I'm just gonna give it a little something across here. That's my fold line. Okay. I really like that. But I just wanna hang on. So I use the walnut for this one. Um, let's come in and use um, Orange County. That's beautiful. So I'm going to add some in, just like this. So you can kind of see how the magic happens. This is another great one. This is called Orange County. And see, I can do it in splitters and splatters and this creates another kind of rusted effect love that color oh that's lovely so that's what it looks like concentrated that's yeah very rusty that's nice I don't care about this as well into that corner there we go and as you can see, when you wet your surface and you put the crystals down, it just it gives it that effect where it wicks out. Love that. That's pooled here. So this is like a concentrated area here. So that's where the real rusty area is. So I like to do when you're doing a focal, I like a focal point sort of when I'm uh, directing where the thickness of the rust is going to be. Like, see how I have it all in this area? And then it's like, and then from there it kind of wicks out. So it kind of looks like it could be the center of where it's been rusted. So it kind of gives it a little bit of realism, even though there is none, if that makes sense. I guess it's maybe more like deliberate kind of where I put, where I put it, if that makes sense. I just wanted to share that. It's where I, my thought process, I guess, comes from. Okay, so I'm loving that. That's awesome. That's brilliant. And yeah, and you can get it to pool and run and add more water, less water. So yeah, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. I love that. That's amazing. So um, let's just have a little play here. So again, I'm going to throw this aside. I'm going to come up here, grab these ones from here, and I'll put that one up there to dry. And we have two more, so let's try. The other one I haven't tried yet is the new A Bit Jaded. Let's give that a go and see what happens. So again, we're going to put down some water so this can wick out a little bit. This is going to give me more of a, like a patina. Oh yes, that is lovely. Okay. And then the more water you add, they're all infused with um, walnut. So when you, the more water that you add, the more, um, undertone of the walnut comes out. There we go. And then I can just come in with, yep, my water brush here. And I can just start wicking it out. There we go. So I can make that run. Just like that. We can wick that all out with water. And again, we keep our concentrated area. Kind of like that. That is a lovely contrast. Okay. Just... 
I want to leave that kind of concentrated like that in here. There we go. I love the infusions. This is wonderful. Someone had asked me to try to use uh, brushos, and I can't find them, guys. I know they're a UK product, but my usual place where I order, they don't carry them. They carry, but they do carry paper artsy products. So I do love the infusions. And as you guys can see, it's just magic. That is amazing. I'm getting somewhere between turquoise and emerald green. It is just amazing. And then this like dirty green in here too from the undertone of the walnut. Because they're all infused with walnut. And then the more water you add, the more walnut you get. And then I just want to uncool this. So now I'm going to have a spot here where I have a little bit of green. I'm just going to pull that up. Because that pulled a little dark. There we go. Now I can just... That's better. Oh, see, I got turquoise all in here. Let's kind of embrace that. So see, the less water you add, you get that turquoise. And the more at water, then it turns to green, because um, when you mix blue with brown, you get, because there's yellow in there as well, then you're going to get that emerald dark green color, and then you're going to get the walnut that, that appears. So that is just an amazing contrast. Get some more up here. So I've got it on my brush like that. I love that effect. Amazing. Okay. So that's another one of our cards. And then that was Orange County. And here's another one, of my, and this is one of my favorites, Golden Sands. Let's pull this one. I'll get in frame so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay. Golden Sands. It's just magic. I've got blue still on my thing. That's okay. We'll embrace that. That is such a lovely color. And I love how we just get full coverage. It is. It's like the ease of playing with watercolor paint. So I just wanted to show that. So, if, you know, you're on the fence and you're you know, you, you're thinking that you have watercolors and you don't really want to give this a go, I cannot recommend it enough. It is fabulous. The infusions, and use so little of them, and they just last for a very long time. You can dye anything with these two, and I'm going to show you that next. We'll do a little demo here. Because, yeah, I know you guys are thinking the same thing. Uh, what do they do when you add fabric? Let's find out together, because I haven't done that yet. All right, so I ordered these from Amazon, and it's really cool, because um, muslin fabric is actually quite expensive in Canada. When I go on Amazon, they want, you know, you know $40 a yard, give or take, $40, $50 a yard, and that's well and great um, if you want enough to cover a journal or whatever, but then when you buy it like that, it's hard to cut it into little square bits. And if you guys are like me, I have a hard time with that. It's like, um, you know, cutting it all straight and perfect and stuff. It's fabric, right? So um, these are actually called natural muslin. Um, epilating strips. They're in a hundred packs. So these are basically for waxing, guys. It's like waxing your legs or whatever. So these are for waxing, and I didn't buy the wax. I just bought the strips. And if you look, they are amazing. They are muslin fabric. 
and they're all cut into perfect little squares. So I could use this as a snippet. I could use this, um, and then I could cut this further into bits and pieces where I'm using it like, you know, like little, little bits or clusters like this or whatever for collaging, um, kind of like I do with my um, cheesecloth. And um, I can also stamp words on here. I can stamp it and I can cut um, the words um, out and use them as um, little little bits on a tag. There's so many things that you can do. So I'm really excited. Let's give this a go and see if we can't dye one of these. So let's try with the Orange County and see what happens with some water. Orange County. Okay, I want a good amount there. That is amazing. And then I'm going to scrunch it all up into a tiny little ball. So I can push it. And I don't care if I'm getting it on me, guys. I'm not going anywhere today. So, here we go. That is amazing. Oh, that is so amazing. So here we go, guys, a little infusions on fabric. That is fabulous. Loving that. Okay. Let's heat her up. Um, so the reason why I'm using a heat tool, um, when you dye fabric with anything water-based and you then heat it up with a heat tool, it becomes permanent. So then I'm able to um, come in with my hands again and uh, manipulate it without it coming all off on my hands. So I just wanted to show that. If I got it wet again, it is going to run and come off on my hands, but um, I'll be able to use this now in a make, and I won't have to worry about it um, contaminating my, my journal pages or bleeding out onto um, another surface um, that I'm working with. So I just wanted to share that. So that's why I come in with the heat tool, the heat it tool. There, and I'm all nice and dry. Okay. That is just fabulous. So I'll move the paper. So it's our first piece of fabric here. That is lovely. Okay, let's come in and we'll do uh, just walnut. I don't think I have a big enough hole in the top of that one. Probably not. There we go. This is just walnut. Mm -hmm. So this year they came out with... Um, this new infusions and it has um, this is what the other ones are infused with for the undertone but it's um, just what it's called just walnut it's amazing here we go Is beautiful. Here we go. And let's do one in a bit shaded. The turquoise. I'm loving the contrast. I can heat them up after. Let's just do this. Okay. So 
I'm just giving them a little spritz first. So yeah, guys, once I hit a thousand subscribers, I'm going to go um, start doing YouTube lives. So I just wanted to share that. I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. So for anyone coming in late, I just want to let you guys know, as soon as I hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, I can start finally doing YouTube lives because they won't let me um, go in. Um, landscape mode from my Facebook group from my phone. And you need a thousand subscribers on YouTube in order to be able to do a YouTube live without using a paid for program like StreamYard or um, Zoom or whatever. And I'm not paying for videos like I said or video editing or any of those things because I'm already um, I pay quite a bit of money to use Photoshop every month and my subscription services for my graphics and I have a Huron tablet that costs me four thousand dollars so there's all kinds of exp other expenses that I have that to me are more important than that so and I want to keep my videos free and that's the other thing I want to keep my content as much of it as possible free and to try to keep my costs down um, the other thing I'd like to look into this year, maybe later, is maybe teaching, teaching some classes, and I have an idea for Patreon. So those are two things I am going to be exploring. So the other thing, too, guys, I'm really excited. I finally just figured out my Kofi account. So all of the group freebies that I have that are under the group files are now all on my Kofi account. So if you guys could go over to Kofi and go look up Fifi the Paper Crafter or follow through my link that I posted in group and um, you follow my shop there that's going to be for all of my um, that's going to be for all of my um, my freebies as well as I want to have some kind of um, option for print and ship in um, North America so if you're in North America and you don't have a printer you can buy kits from my shop in on Etsy and then in Kofi, you'll be able to do um, a physical copy. I'll have an option there for that if you want it printed. So I've got some exciting things that are that are coming. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. You guys have a fabulous weekend, and I'll be back this week. Um, so again, thank you to everyone who watches my videos, and subscribes to my YouTube channel. And when I hit 1,000 uh, subscribers, I'm going to be doing a, um, a giveaway. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but it's going to be something super fun. So again, these are so amazing. So we got three completely different results using our infusions on fabric. I'm just going to these air dry, and then I'm going to heat tool them. So again, thank you guys, and we made all kinds of die cuts. They're all over my desk. So once these things all dry, I'll, I can post pictures. We're going to be making different things um, in our book. I'm loving that walnut. It is just amazing. And we used paper artsy rusting powders and infusions. See, guys, it looks like metal, if you guys can see that. There we go. When you pull it. And then it's going to start rusting more. Right now it looks like metal, but... Come this evening, it's going to be red rust. So I just wanted to share that. It's a lot of fun. And there's the outside of that one. And then the inside we did with walnut, but we pulled it. So it looks. And that's going to where we are going to attach all the all the die cuts to for the gears and stuff. And roll over here. All right, thank you guys. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you back this week for sure. Um, I want to do a part two to this where we do like the next steps when we start building um, some makes. And also I want to do um, some things using some transparencies. And I want to talk about that. And we will go ahead and um, continue our journal covers and then get into, um, get into setting up our pages. All right, guys, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you back next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye.